Welcome to Springboro 45066, Part 1. The TV News Magazine show of Springboro, Ohio. On Part 1 of our November-December episode, we meet with our new superintendent of Springboro Schools, Carrie Hester, and get the forecast on what's to come in the new season. We'll revisit the ever-popular Art Fest that happened in August and all the highlights from our co-host, Carrie Robbins. At the library, we hear all about early winter programming, and at the Kaufman YMCA, they're going to tell us all about the sports this winter. On Meet Your Neighbor, we'll talk to Springboro resident and dear friend, Tim Simpson, who's the assistant fire chief. He's getting ready to retire. It's all happening right now on Springboro 45066, part one. We're here at Clerk Creek Fire Department, main station. Welcome to 45066, November, December 2022 edition. On behalf of Carrie and I and Joe, we want to say we apologize for not being with you for a while. We've been scheduling and different things going on, just couldn't get it and some of our stuff was stale. So we do apologize, but this show is going to make up for it as well as part two. So anyway, welcome to the show again. We love to have you. Carrie Carrie. Yes. At the schools. Yes. It was Tell us something. a great interview with our new superintendent, Carrie Hester. The two Carries, we were on the football field. It was a great afternoon. Shall we go check it out? Let's go check it out. Okay. Hmm? We are at CareFlight Field at Watkins Stadium and so fortunate to be joined today by our new superintendent of schools, Carrie Hester. Carrie, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Well, first of all, congratulations on your new position as superintendent of Springboro Schools. Thank you. I am honored to be given this chance to be the superintendent. Well, we're so fortunate to have you. I know you've been with our district for quite a while now, but you've just kind of stepped into the new role. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what it feels like to be superintendent and you know what what has kind of been in store during the new school year so the new school year has gotten started with an incredible positive vibe i know i've said that before but it's true i've been doing listen and learn tours through each building i have one left on monday and the staff and student body are just super excited to be back post pandemic where it is i hate to say it somewhat normal i mean we don't have to interact with each other with masks mm -hmm. and we can not hold our breaths thinking something bad's going to be around the corner and so it has really really been upbeat. Wonderful, wonderful. Well that's exactly what we want to hear and we love seeing each other's smiling faces. Absolutely, you especially know. in those younger grades where you've got to be able to see what your teacher is saying to understand and comprehend. Most definitely, most definitely. So let's talk a little bit about kind of the, the nuts and bolts of the district. Uh, strategic plan. Yes, we are super excited to um, have had our Board of Education approve our new strategic plan late last year, knowing that this is the year that we are going to undertake. There are five aspirations with a lot of steps and, and processes underneath. And so as a team in each building, this is our guide rail to to really keep us focused on what's important to continue to improve the amazing academic programming that we offer in Springboro. Wonderful. Now, I understand, obviously, we passed a levy recently. What are some of the things that our levy is impacting today at the schools and what will it impact in the future? Yes. So um, thank you to our community for approving the PI, the permanent improvement levy, um, last May. It's, it always takes a little while to see the, the actual mm -hmm. money come sure. through, but it is in this summer. Um, we had multiple projects across the district, but um, most visible, I think, to many, the new paving that has been done. Um, I know at SI and at the high school, and you think, oh, paving, but paving is very, very expensive. And over the years, we've let it, because of money, it's kind of gone downhill. And so we've got new pavement throughout, walkways. Walkways have been um, maintained and fixed. We've gotten 13 new buses. Awesome. Um, something simple like cafeteria tables. Sure. Those things are necessary. They're, it's not, you yeah. know, really, oh my gosh, but um, we but need them. But incredibly important. Yes. Sure, so all basically for the, the safety and comfort of our students and, and mm -hmm. you know, our employer, or employees, excuse me, of Absolutely. Springboro Schools. And we were fortunate to um, be awarded through the state a safety grant. Okay. Um, $300,000 district wide that'll go into definitely our camera systems that need upgrading. Um, we're looking at doors and just ways to continue to enhance our security. 
fantastic. I mean, school security, I think, is on everyone's mind. You know, whether you're a parent or not, that's something that, you know, when you turn on the news, we're faced with that daily. Absolutely. And we have a safety team that meets monthly. House Bill 123 has required all schools to have threat assessment teams, which sure. we will be sending teams for training. So it is, it is a daily topic of discussion and focus. Wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what we were, I think, jokingly kind of calling the two C's, climate and culture. Oh, absolutely. So we do things um, amazing here in Springboro, but I think post pandemic that affected everybody, uh -huh. even though we stayed in school every single day, which was very, very hard, but we did it. Um, we can always improve. We want to be a place where everybody, staff and students, feels valued and they add value. Mm -hmm. And so that means looking at our culture and figuring out where we need to tweak it and um, have a common language so that we are all on the same page. No, I think that's fantastic. Now, today is game day, because I'm guessing people are seeing some you know, hustle and bustle behind us. We're obviously on the football field today. Let's talk a little bit about school spirit. Absolutely. You know, as oh. the superintendent, tell me a little bit, you know, what it, what is the, the spring row spirit? You know, tell me a bit, a little bit about what that means to you. Well, um, one thing that we are fortunate is that we are Panthers K-12. Mm -hmm. You are, you come in in kindergarten and you're a Panther and you leave as a senior as a Panther. Right. And we, that's part of our culture and climate that we really want to embrace and build upon. But there is nothing better than Friday night lights. And tonight is Centerville, which is a yes. huge rivalry. Yes. There is nothing better than um, watching the stands fill up and our marching band and just the performance mm -hmm. that is put on by everybody, mm -hmm. the cheerleaders, and then the hard work of our football team. It, it really makes you proud it's to be true. a Panther. No, you're right. And you know, as, as a, a Spring Row alum, you know, you're right. Once a Panther, always a Panther. Yes. And we feel it not only through our student body, but our community. There is a um, fierce sense of loyalty and history. Truly, truly. And I mean, you can feel it here tonight. You know, we are getting ready to play Centerville. And I mean, it is, it's palpable. It is. You and, know, it's And you exciting. know what? We're going to win. Even if it's by one point, that's a W that, yeah. that we deserve. That's all we need yep. is just one. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending some time this afternoon with us. Thank it's you. always a pleasure. And we're so fortunate to have you as our superintendent. Thank you. I'm excited for this journey. Well, best of luck to you. And I'm sure we'll see you again very soon. Yes. Thank you. Right, back to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carrie. It's always great to spend time with you. And how much fun was that on the football field? Absolutely. You know, a football coach, I love that. I, mean, I know. The gridiron. It, it was a great day. Art Fest, what a sensational job. What a great, successful event this year. I, I mean, honestly, Incredible. our hearts were exploding on Art Fest Day. We were blessed by the weather and, I mean, the crowds. The crowds just grew exponentially. You know, I think they estimated what eight to ten thousand people came to see us on Art it was Fest great. Day. It was a wonderful day in August. We had a hundred artists, live music throughout the day, food trucks, beer, wine, cocktail area, and of course we capped off the evening or the event with dinner on Main, which I know you were oh, yeah, at, in attendance, which was awesome, which is our fundraising farm to table dinner, which uh, supports the Springboro Arts Council and then a partner organization that we uh, you know, choose every year. We switch it every year. This year it supported the Springboro Wind Symphony. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful event. You know, we were thrilled. You got a date for next year? We do. It's August 26th, 2023. Oh, wow. And you'll be involved heavily as always. I mean, do I have a choice? No, no. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it. It was, was a great event. Thank uh, you. It just showcases the historic district, and that's a good thing. It does. It does. You know, it grows our art community, and it also, you know, helps all of the businesses downtown. So it's a win-win. All right, well, thanks to all the folks who volunteered and all the folks that came out for our fest. Well, Great and, event. And thank you to the city for supporting us. We couldn't do it, you know, what without we're here for. everyone. What we're here for. Well, it's time to go to the library. We always love the library. Let's go see the girls. All right, let's go see them. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the Springboro Library. I'm Vicki Sweeney, the assistant director, and this is Susan Horner, the branch manager here at Springboro. As you can see, we are under construction and there's a lot of dust and activity going on. Sometimes it gets really loud in here. We have lots of things still available, as you can see, out in the collection. 
and we have um, a limited collection, but you can come in and still check stuff out. You can pick up your holds. You can also check our website at fspl.org for any updates about construction or like us on Facebook or Instagram. We always put stuff out on there. So we are adding on about 4,500 square feet, which will include a big meeting room, a conference room, some study rooms, and new bathrooms. In addition to that, we're also renovating the inside of the library and moving some collections around when this is all said and done. That's about all that I can tell you right now, and Joe's gonna go take some shots of the uh, construction, so back to you guys. Kaufman YMCA time. I know, I know. I mean, we love our Kaufman Y. Oh, we and, do. I mean, so many great things. And, and they're going to have things. a new director now. I heard. David Thompson's leaving. I heard. He's going to get a big promotion and a uh, f former uh, director of the Xenia Y. Allen is going to be coming in on his behalf. Awesome. Well, congratulations, David. And thank you for all you have done for us and our community. Let's go visit the Y. Yes. Hmm? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and welcome back to the Kaufman Family YMCA. I want to provide everybody with an update uh, real quick on some of the news that's happening here at the Kaufman Y. It's been my distinct pleasure and honor to be able to serve the Kaufman YMCA and the Springboro community for 12 years now, um, but my role's changing with the YMCA. Recently, I accepted a promotion um, to be our Vice President of Association Advancement. I will be working out of our Metro office, downtown Dayton, um, and I'll be the Vice President overseeing human resources as well as marketing and communications for our YMCA uh, of Greater Dayton region. With me today is Alan Milkus. Um, Alan, um, can you share a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. sure. Um, so I've been with the YMCA of Greater Dayton for uh, 15 going on 16 years and uh, I am getting ready to uh, take over the position, uh, David's position here at the Springboro Kaufman Family YMCA uh, beginning on uh, October 31st. So I'm looking forward to being part of the Springboro community. Thank you, Alan. I can tell you, you are in good hands, Springboro. Alan has done a fantastic job uh, with our Xenia YMCA in uh, his efforts to uh, bring a new Xenia YMCA to that community. You're definitely in good hands. Well, I just wanted to give everybody a, a last thank you uh, for your warm welcome to me 12 years ago. It's been my distinct pleasure to serve uh, here uh, at the Kaufman YMCA and to be part of the Springboro community. This is a special community and uh, I wish you all the best. And Alan, I best wish you all the best in the world. So, Mr. Mayor, back to you. Hmm? Okay, we always appreciate what the Y does. Carrie and I enjoy coming out and talk to you and seeing yes. about all the events, a big part of our community. Thank you so much. Oh, I hear a drum roll. Oh, we haven't lost our touch. We still got it from Meet Your Neighbor. We still got it. Meet Your Neighbor, part one. Tim Simpson, assistant fire chief. Yes. We're in his domain today. Anyway, he's getting ready to retire and go on to a new career. So he doesn't know what that's gonna be yet. Let's go talk to Tim. Hmm? We're here at Clear Creek Fire Department, the main office. We are here with the Assistant Fire Chief, Tim Simpson. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you, Tim. Thanks for inviting me. you for a long time. Me. Yep. All right. Good to see you again. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Um, lifelong resident of uh, Springboro. Graduate. Uh, graduated in 1983. Um, entire life here since 1965. Uh, 1987 graduate of Miami University in Oxford. Um, have you know, been in the Southwest Ohio region and watched the Springboro Clear Creek community grow and evolve over the past uh, 57 years in my case. Yeah, well I understand that you want to be legal in this here before long and taking on some maybe a new career or whatever after all these years in the fire department. How many years have you been in the fire department? 
Um, 36. It's, un it's incredible. Total, yeah. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Yeah, you've been involved in so many things through the years. Memorial Day program, all kinds of different issues. Play we played softball together on Sundays years ago. That's how far back it goes. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you go back. Exactly. Yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family? Um, uh, my wife, uh, Janice, um, she uh, has uh, lived in the, the Dayton area pretty much all her life as well. She was originally from Maryland, but uh, lived most of her life in the, the Kettering area. Um, we've been married uh, since 1994. Congratulations. Um, we've got two, two kids, um, both uh, Miami University graduates as well. Um, my, uh, my daughter uh, works for a, a large payroll processing firm as a, a payroll uh, customer support specialist. And uh, my son works for a large uh, multinational software company as a software developer. And so the college education helps you? Yep, sure does. It does. Even if you have to take grants out, I mean, it's a great thing. Okay. Well, you can't go by the Miami Redskins anymore. No. That's, that's not particularly Red, popular. Red Hawks. Yeah, the Red Hawks now. They were Redskins when I was there, though. Yeah, so, I but, know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Like the worst than Red It goes on and on. It's not politically correct. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I... I've known you for a long time, and I, I guess there's a lot of things I could say about you in terms of accolades, but I guess the biggest thing that I've ever noticed being the mayor all these years or whatever, there's never been a time that I called upon you that you weren't there. Just like your mission statement as a firefighter, you know, you're there. And I want to thank you for all the contributions you made to the city of Springboro and the Clear Creek Township. It's been amazing, the partnership between the two, and you're the joint fire district to take care of us, and we do appreciate all that you do. And you've got a great group of people that you and others have led over these years, so uh, thank you for that. So what do you think you might you have any ideas? Or what, what's on the horizon? Are you going to just take it easy, or what are you going to do? Um, well, you know, I think, you know, in some respects, people call this an end, but it's actually kind of a beginning. Um, you know, you go through several phases of life. You, you grow up, you graduate from high school, and uh, what am I going to do? Career, go to college, whatever. You go to college and you graduate from college, and it's like, what am I going to do now? And it's like, you know, I've gone to school my whole life. I don't know how to do anything other than that. So, you know, you, you explore things or whatever. You know, I've had you know, several part-time jobs, and, you know, I taught um, school for a while. I was an athletic trainer and did sports medicine stuff for several years. And then I, I kind of got into this and it became a career. Started as a volunteer when I was in college and and just gradually grew it for that. So, you know, in leaving here, um, just kind of trying to keep my options open right now. Um, you know, I, I do have interests. I think it's important to be involved, to keep the mind engaged type of thing. But, you know, 36 years is a long time to stay at one place. And, you know, I, I think I would like to explore some, some opportunities and things, but I, I don't have anything written in stone just yet. Yeah. Just kind of keep options open. I want to try to spend a little more time with the family, maybe do some things that we haven't been able to do right. over the years because of the, the commitments of, you know, working in a, an emergency service organization requires. Well, you've got your credentials and resume to open doors, and yeah, obviously you're not in any rush after working that many years. Uh, but we do wish you all the success that you can have uh, in your new career, your new life, so to speak. What, you know, we always ask people on the Meet Your Neighbor show, what in Springboro, Clear Creek Township, you being a resident, what can we do better, if anything? Uh, what do you think that, that you would like to see that we don't already do or have? Is there anything? You know, Springboro over the years, I think, has always been very um, forward thinking, um, trying to make a, a very nice community to live. Um, to have good services, good safety services, good police, good parks and recreation, just a, a good community atmosphere to, to live in, safe community. Um, pretty much anything that you would need, you can find right here locally without having to, to, to leave town or the area to, to get those things. Um, I'm hard pressed to find anything that the, that the city hasn't came up with or, you know, even the township, you know, we have great parks, great and we infrastructure have great is, is, is constantly being improved. And uh, the relationship lots, lots of partnerships. The relationship and the partnerships is impeccable. I would say probably you, you would speak for a lot of other people. We could use an upscale restaurant. That's what I hear all the time. And then when I say, what upscale restaurant? Chick-fil-A. Well, Chick-fil-A is not an upscale restaurant, but they want one really, really bad. 
Yeah, so. uh, you, you know, I, I didn't want to jump on that songbird there with that. You know, I like Chick-fil-A, too. But, yeah, I you, do, but, too. You know, I it's like Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I, mean, I love that with Chick-fil-A. But, you know, in any case, is there anything you'd like to leave us with to tell the audience before we say bye-bye? Um, no, I basically, you know, I would like to, to thank everyone for the opportunity to serve um, the Clear Creek and Springboro community over the many, many years. Um, the partnerships, the working together with the, the city and the township, as well as Warren County, um, you know, all the things that we have here today, we wouldn't be anywhere near where we are right now without those partnerships. We were able to accomplish so much more together than any one individual can do. And there, there's been so many people that have, that have helped and contributed um, in that journey along the way. They could learn from us in Washington, them. couldn't they? Yes. They could learn it from us. Could. be better, yeah. Well, anyway, Tim Simpson, assistant fire chief, wish him the best in his new career. Way bye, Tim. See ya. Bye. Thanks, Tim. It's a pleasure. We wish you nothing but the best. Well, we're coming to a close on part one, but yes. part two is right around the just corner. Just around the corner. But before we do that, I would like to just say uh, November, obviously, is Veterans Day. Yes. Marine Corps birthday on November 10th. Yes. Hug of that. They appreciate it. They serve their country, rather peacetime of war. Uh, they answer the call, raise the right hands. So thank them for what they do each and every day. Uh, we also our first responders as well. And then when we get into Christmas, we have nothing but good health and cheer. Be safe. Watch out. Right? What do you say, Carrie? I, I think you covered it all for us, Mayor. That's true, though. You know, veterans, we thank you for all you do. Our first responders as well. I mean. They take care of us on our absolute worst days. Until the next show, we're glad to be back. We are we thrilled to be back. We will see you then. Don't forget to watch part two. Bye. You can access MVCC from your Roku. Looking at the home page, select the Add Channels option. This will take you to the Roku Channel Store where you can find the Search Channel option on the left side of the screen. Enter in the word Screenweave and the Cablecast icon will pop up. This is a free channel and it is where you will find different PEG access programming including MVCCs. Once you add the channel, you can find it on your home screen with all of your other favorites. Inside Screenweave, you will find the Miami Valley Communications Council, among other access channels. Browse through pre-recorded council meetings or check out what is happening in any of our four MVCC channel streams.